Today, I'm going to take you on a magical adventure to Socorro Island, as some call it, the Mini Galapagos. But I think that name does so much injustice. Socorro still remains one of my top dive sites that I've ever been in the entire world, and I highly recommend it to any avid scuba diver. Let's dive right in. Socorro Island is somewhere no one will go to unless you're a scuba diver. When you get there, all you will see is this very volcanic rock that has no beaches and nowhere you would really want to walk around on. You will never disembark the boat. You will be on the boat the entire time you're there. There is just a Mexico Navy station in the area and otherwise is completely desolate and isolated. But what you're there to see is underneath the water. It's a part of the Revlegido Island chain, which sits 375 nautical miles off of the coast of Mexico, particularly Baja California. You will scuba dive amongst four different islands in the area, namely Socorro, Clarion, Roca Partita, and San Benedicto. To get to Socorro, you will either depart from Cabo San Luca or San Jose del Cabo. You can get to both through the Cabo International Airport. And Socorro is very far away. It takes a full day of by boat to get there and coming back two days to get back because you're against the current and it's going to be rough. Just remember that. It'll be rough. <laughs> but doesn't make Socorro not worth going. We visited back in 2019 on the Nautilus, which is a fellow YouTube channel and has some great content. I'll make sure to link it on the screen for you to check out. It's one of the highest reviewed and best operations that we found when we went. My wife complains to this day about the food that they offered, so I don't know if it's any better today, but it wasn't great back then. I was okay with it, so your mileage may vary. But the one thing that stuck out with me the longest, and I can't say this is gonna be the same for everyone, but we had a fantastic time with the staff. The, the captain, all the crew, the dive masters. It was really amazing to see everything gel and the different personalities of all the crew members. And I had a really good time. Probably one of my better experiences on liveaboards, but whether you're a fan of liveaboards or not, it is the only way you're going to get to Socorro. So it's very similar to Galapagos in a way that it's far from the coastline and you're gonna be out there on this boat, this vessel with that crew very far from help or a decompression chamber. So it's very important to note that Socorro is not super beginner friendly. So I highly recommend checking out their website letting the boat know your skill level and seeing if it's a good fit. But I will say mistakes can be very dangerous. There can be quite a bit of current there and there is no ground in a lot of different dive sites. All you will see is surrounded by blue. So if you get blown away from the small little island, which is, it's, it's island, it's, it's called an island, but it's more like a giant pillar that just goes straight down. It's really remarkable to see. And there's a bunch of life that lives in the wall of the pillar. But beyond that pillar, there's absolutely nothing. So you have to really keep an eye on where that pillar is and make sure you don't get blown away from the dive site because there's nothing else around. So if Socorro's on your list and you're preparing to take that journey, just remember, it's a very remote location out in the middle Pacific. And the unique thing that you will want to go there for diving is because the sediments from the Pacific blow all the way down the coast, what you might consider the desert of the ocean, but it collects and blows through this one area, also a volcanic area with lots of nutrients on its own. With all these things factored in, Socorro becomes an oasis in the desert of the ocean, and all of the life in the ocean knows this. And so a lot of things that are kind of migrating or transferring through will stop at this oasis and so it's a great place to see pelagic animals, big sea life, including whales and whale sharks. And if you're really lucky, maybe orcas, but you can't really count on them to be there. And Socorro is protected from fishing and is a natural sanctuary for the wildlife. And so with fishing rampant across the world, there's very few places where things can go and feel safe and Socorro is one of them. And so that is 
a protected place. And while you're there, make sure you show respect to that place because it is really a sanctuary for sea life. And what you will see there is behaviors and interesting interactions that you will never see anywhere in the world. I kid you not, from the whale sharks to the mantas, they interacted and played with the divers. And I've never seen anything like that ever, anywhere else. Often mantas or whale sharks are doing their thing and you can approach them sometimes, but they will generally just keep on doing their thing. Here, it almost seemed like they were playing. Being, I saw a whale shark stopping and letting scuba divers approach it. And he would sit and look at the scuba divers. It's almost like wondering like, wow, you guys are so slow. And then it would start finning with that giant massive tail and it would get a lot of thrust and then it would stop again and let all the scuba divers catch up to it. And it would just sit there and observe. It was really, really curious. And while we're boarding a boat, there's this big old oceanic manta that followed us up to the surface, looking at us, board the boat, and just flopping on the surface. It's huge, just sitting there flopping on the surface. I think it's trying to get a good view of us getting in the boat because it's curious to see where we're going. Speaking of which, mantas are fish, but what's really interesting is they are considered to be one of the world's smartest fish. So that's kind of an interesting fact. And here, they will play and interact with you like you've never seen before. If you're hyped to Basakoro now, you might be asking yourself, when is the best time to visit? There is no perfect time, to be honest. The wildlife will shift and take turns in different part of year. So it depends on what you want to see, but even then I have to asterisk all of this information being you have a probability of seeing things. So you might go in the best time of the season to see something and you might see nothing because that's how nature works. But I will say you have a nearly 100% chance of seeing the oceanic mantas and their playful nature there. The number you see may fluctuate, but other than that, you definitely will see the oceanic manta. During November and December is the best time to see whale sharks. I remember we went in September and we saw whale sharks, two of them. So maybe we're just lucky, but we're talking probabilities here. So your highest chance of seeing them is November and December, but I don't know what the percentage difference is. And it's also worth noting that the world is changing and if you talk to enough dive masters and people who maybe work on the nautilus or these different live boards to probably say that the patterns of the sea life are changing to respond to the world changing as well and so i don't think any of us know what the change really means in the long run but things are changing and so these seasons may be shifting often i hear they're shifting either forward or backwards so do a little bit of research before you plan on going just to be sure your best chance of seeing humpbacks, but humpbacks are quite rare to be seen there, is during the winter season up through April. And bottlenose dolphins are there from January to March. It's also worth noting that the conditions of the ocean change a little bit depending on the season too. November through May has the calmest season, and November has the peak high temperatures. So if you're looking at wanting warm water, it's the best time to go. But by peak, I mean 20 degrees Celsius, which is still not too warm, but it's also not too cold. And outside the peak, it can be around 20 degrees Celsius. All right, you're probably wondering what all you will see at Socorro. Let's talk about it. Aside from the migration of the humpback whales and the whale sharks I mentioned earlier, other things you'll get to see are silky sharks. I remember very vividly one of the unique experiences while I was there was at nighttime after the sun goes down they put on this big old light in the back of the boat that attracts a bunch of the fish to the light and that naturally attracts silky sharks and silkies are good sized sharks they're good medium they can be a little dangerous if you see them in the blue but what's interesting in this particular area the boats have been doing it long enough that the silky sharks seem to know that this is something that the boats do and it's what they bring. And when you jump in the water and start snorkeling around, they will leave you alone. At least I haven't heard of anyone being ever bit by silkies. And I was told it never has happened. And also I was doing it. With all that said, it is a very interesting experience because the silkies, 
there's a whole bunch of fish flying around and the silkies will come and bump you, be flying by, and it's a very unique experience. Pretty nerve wracking, but a unique experience. And one I would recommend not missing out on, aside from that. And that's kind of something you do on the side. The actual scuba dives that you do, you will see silkies on rare occasion, but what I saw a lot more of are these bigger, kind of larger sized sharks, the Lapagos sharks. And they're good size, and you can see a whole bunch of them. And you can also see a bunch of white tip reef sharks that kind of congregate in the island crevices and these little dents in the rock. And sometimes I remember seeing like 50 or more of them just kind of sausaging around in this little area because your long body is very interesting to see them all just floating around, swimming around in this area. They're more intimidated by you than you should be of them. The Galapagos sharks are a little more intimidating, but they're also not a very aggressive shark. So you can observe them in their full splendor. In addition, you'll see a lot of bottlenose that are kind of coming and going. You can't really count on them ever being there, but you'll see them on the surface. And if you're lucky, you'll see them under the water. I remember seeing a manta with a bottlenose right next to each other, and that was really special to me. And of course, let's talk about those oceanic manta. The manta you will be sure to see because you will do several dives at this dive site called the Boiler at San Benedicto. And your main purpose there is to see the manta and you will pretty much have the whole dive to spin up the manta. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll see the bottlenose dolphin show up as well. So what's special is the manta are there to be cleaned, but they will kind of interact with you. It'll seem like they're interested in your bubbles, but I've been told that they don't like the bubbles. So try not to blow your bubbles at them, but I think everyone, at least when I was there, everyone's blowing their bubbles on them. So it is what it is, but that won't make them leave. They'll still stick around despite the bubbles and you'll get to see them in their full brilliance, swimming around like an oceanic angel. And it's really quite amazing to see. And where you'll see all the reef white tip sharks is in the pinnacle of Rocca Partita. And so that's definitely a dive site you want to miss. And you often see large schools of tuna and jack in the area, sometimes being hunted by the sharks in the early morning. And another famous dive site is Clarion Island which is a little bit different from the other dive sites I've mentioned. It tends to be more about smaller reef fish, and you'll have a good chance of seeing the bottlenose dolphins there, as well as turtles and silver tip sharks. And one really special behavior that I've never seen anywhere else, I have to mention because it's so cool. If you get the chance to see a whale shark, which I guess you kind of got to get lucky to see them, but when you do, there's so much sharks in the area. You'll see the whale shark, it's just standing out. I mean, such a big creature to be honest, but you have to watch and observe the other sharks because they get all excited. They're kind of fidgeting around and, and what you'll see, they'll fly straight at the whale shark and they smash against the sidewall of the whale shark and they'll smack right against the hard skin because the skin's very scaly it's like sandpaper and so they treat it like a way of cleaning themselves or kind of polishing I guess their their skin but they'll smack right against that sidewall and then start swimming in our direction and so I don't know what it's like to be a whale shark but I imagine that's a huge violation of its space but you'll see all the sharks doing it and everything's just going to town on it so make sure you don't get in the way of any that happening but it's really entertaining to watch. So are you interested in Socorro? If this video helped convince you that Socorro is on your bucket list, please do let me know in the comments down below. And if I piqued your interest in sharks, I have gone on many dives in some incredible places with sharks and a lot of people fear sharks. I have just a video for you to watch next and I'll link it right here. Go check it out and let me know what you think about sharks afterwards.